but but it's funny. You, and these kids could see guys like Freddie King do a show somewhere, and if, if seeing Freddie King doesn't shock the hell out of you, I don't know what. Does. <laughs> Changed my life, John. I don't know if you saw him around here. At, I did. I, I, yeah. saw him, I saw him at the Armadillo a lot. Yeah, it was, was the powerful. loudest band I've ever heard. <laughs> and before he was doing that, he was playing. He'd play like the Hideaway Club, mm. and um, I don't, I don't, nineteenth Weberville Road, you know, out there. And so he'd go sit in there, and he'd always have a pickup band. Yeah, and I I played with Johnny Copeland, who lived in mm. Austin in a, for about one year in the early '70s, mm -hmm. and uh, he he got us some gig where we backed up Freddie King for about five songs. And thought, you remember the Harlem Theater? Or yeah, he's twelve. Sure do. sure do. We actually played in there like starting at midnight, and mm. and uh, Freddie King came in and played. It was after an armadillo show. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things that that guy Tony Vaughn. You remember that? Yeah, DJ? Tony Vaughn. Yeah, Tony Taylor. Vaughn. He was the right. guy that really turned the blues, uh, a lot of the white kids around here yeah. onto the blues. The one it was hour Tony Vaughn. radio but, show. You know, they're trying to, they're trying to, um, there's a Martin Luther King Street in uh, in Taylor that they're trying to actually change the name of it to Tony Vaughn. Tony Vaughn? Vaughn. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that guy was, was a really influential guy. I mm -hmm. mean, he had the, uh, was it KTAE or whatever it was, a Taylor radio station. And yes. He played, he was a really courageous dude. He really was. He he really went up against it. Like one hour of, of black music per day or something on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Saturdays. And, uh, yeah. 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 I mean, it was, but it was great. I mean, we would just wait for it and soak it up. You know? And he would play your record too. I think if you gave him twenty bucks or something, it was really like. Low, low scale pay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, get his name, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, uh, for a cheeseburger that, today. I, when I was in, in high school, I was in Temple, and uh, that I would it, Tony Vaughn was loomed large, you know, and the my most exposure that I had was on WLS oh, out yeah. of Nashville, Tennessee. WLAC. 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 Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. Randy's John Records. R. That show. The John R. Show. Randy's Record John Shop. Show, yeah. Randy's Record Shop. Shop. And you could order like 99 live chickens. Yeah, baby and chicks. And delivered. <laughs> Guaranteed live. Straight to your door. Cash check with money ordered. But they didn't and call them chicks. Like, they called them... He would play all those guys. Pullets or, or something. That was, it. That was my Pullets only... Pullets, yeah. Pullets. That was the only way I could I could hear that stuff unless I went went at, you know went to Tony's and, and bought the stuff. Yeah, because they'd play like a song by Clarence Carter and then they'd play a song by Elmore James. Yeah, exactly right. Great. It was amazing. It was, it was late too, right? Late yeah. at night. Yeah, it was. I'd be driving home from a gig, mm -hmm. like a frat gig here in Austin or something like that, and mm -hmm. it would fade in and out. You know, I'd be just like, "Oh, come on!" But they had a strong you enough know. signal to get to get through a lot and of the, times. The, yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Well, they had, and and as far as my hearing guitar and stuff, they also had probably like like they had in Houston. They had a station in Dallas called I think it was WRR, and they had this show called Cats Caravan. I think it was Friday night. I believe the guy's name was Jim Lowe, but he played blue, played Lightning Hopkins and Howlin' Wolf, and and you. So, kind of like you, I thought, well, that's just on the radio, you know. Yeah. Music on the radio. I my I experience was different because I I moved in from San Francisco when I was sixteen, and the first time I ever heard Freddie was there because the the I had this little surf band, and we had a, uh, this bass player that turned me on to Freddie King. He said, "Have you ever heard this stuff?" And because I, I, my exposure was uh, the the adventures and Chuck Berry. That was my, those were my icons, you know. And uh, I, I had this Chuck Berry record called One Dozen Berries that I wore out. I told him one time, I said, oh, I wore out one of your records. He says, just one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and this guy turned me on to uh, Freddie King, and I went. Oh shit! Yeah, mm -hmm. man, right. listen to this. Yeah. Right, because like I was telling you on the phone the other night, Derek, it was like this guy. It wasn't just playing lines, you know, and and soloing and burning it up. He he, although he did, he played stuff that you could whistle, that you could. Yeah, great. Yeah, and perfect come, solos. Come mm -hmm. up and you know you, you could repeat it almost. You there know? were melodies. Let him realize he could he sing was a really it first. Really melodic <laughs> player, and it was real simple. And uh, mm -hmm. and but it was still had that man had that wrenching feeling that that good blues has you know it's really 
I was I was completely sold at that. And they point. made like two or three instrumental records. And he goes, he sings. Did you know? He yeah, sings? right. Yeah, yeah. Sang. That was the crazy thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, God, you know, he was so good. If he didn't even play guitar, he'd be one of the greatest blues singers in the world. Yeah, exactly. And right. you put that together, very few humans can sing and play that good at the same uh, time. That's right, Freddie and BB. Mm -hmm. Freddie was stunning. I saw the last time Fred, two months before he died, I saw BB King, Bobby Bland, and Freddie King. And oh, I bet was that was a great. Advertised show. on black radio. There was in twelve thousand people in Houston at the Coliseum, maybe five white people. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I sat mm -hmm. in my little spot where I could look right on the stage. I wasn't 20 feet away from them. Oh, but that was And uh, so it's BB and Bobby and Freddie all playing. Then they all play at the end together mm -hmm. and uh, Freddie walks yeah. out and uh, BB King hands him Lucille and yeah. wiping the sweat. And they're really cutting up in a <laughs> show that, that, man, it was stunning. And then two months later, uh, Freddie was dead. But it was you know, a great well, show. That yeah. Night. Freddie and BB together, they... They stand out to me because they they sing like they play, or they play like they yeah. sing. Mm -hmm. There's not much difference whether they're playing or singing. It's just it's, it's both it's, beautiful melodic melody, just and about it's not, as perfect. It's, and it's beyond as you can genre. Do. It's beyond. There's no genre. It's just music. At yeah. that point in time, it's just music. It doesn't matter if it's blues, what side of the tracks it is. Doesn't matter. It's just music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, and. Uh, Freddie really connected with that rock crowd. His timing was perfect, and then mm -hmm. the Leon Russell yep. stuff, and then yeah, mm -hmm. and the fact that he liked big bell bottoms with yep. shiny white girls <laughs> printed on the legs. <laughs> Purple bell. <laughs> There's some funny clothes, but yeah, the platform man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and he was already six foot four, you know. And Freddie King, pretty pretty stunning though. That was a guy that did kind of rule my listening for so long. There was just nothing he did that I didn't. Worship and lie. I don't mm. think he's got any bad records. No, he's, everything, you can figure everything that stuff out like as a kid. Was. You could figure out what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's accessible and real soulful and yeah. in the pocket. And it's so perfect. There, it sounds like he yeah. figured that out beforehand, except he just played it. No, that's, that's just the way he but thought. It's just so because that's the way he thought. That's so he thought right, that you know. Okay. Those guys on the first the Hideaway record didn't really know Freddie. They were just a local yeah. studio jazz guys that did what we're doing. They ran over some arrangements mm -hmm. and did all those great songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Including like, Bill Willis on bass. Yeah, Bill right? Willis, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. So that's the approach. We will uh, do that tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll go play our $30 game. Then we'll go play our $30. Hey, man, I got a $30 tonight. <laughs> but they gave me free beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was okay. the one night. That was right, the one night club. Never yeah. covered free beer. Free beer. For the band. And whatever. Pass the whatever. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, cool. Yeah, there were, there was there was another sort of support for that for those clubs back then that was off the economy. Mm -hmm. Kept those. I mean, yeah. I, I I don't mean to put it down because it was it was what was happening, and it kept the scene alive. Because yeah. if it weren't for that, that shit never would have happened. That's right, and that's that's through history. True right. enough. I mean, that's exactly back. right. That's the dancers right. and the it's, a, and it's an old, it's an old tradition, and I don't think it's wrong. I think it's it's right where it needs to be. It depends on how you handle it. You can either handle it or you can't handle it. If you can, oh, you know, I I want I was talking to Bert last night. I want to ask him about he he played. Did a bunch of sessions at Gold Star, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, oh, wow. I've only been in that place like once or twice, but just the stuff you must have seen in there would would be really something yeah. I'd like to hear about. Yeah. What can you say? I mean, Huey was running that show, and everybody's you know Huey's got such a bad rap now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, what I want to know is, where did you find desert boots at, dude? <laughs> at the mall. Yeah, they're back. They're back all over. Oh, my jeez. I'm just now realizing I went, golly. I wore these all through the <laughs> I used to wear them all the time, too. I hadn't seen any in years. Yeah. It's all about coming. Desert boots. Right. Yeah, desert boots. Right. 